Hello everyone. Welcome to today's first webinar uh, on getting started with enterprise design. And Bart, I forgot to put your picture. Oh, well, I here I am. Hello everyone. <laughs> put your name. <laughs> <laughs> My name's good enough. The face doesn't matter. Yeah, and you know, it only took me three or four years and now I know how to write it. Mm -hmm. Good on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, if in case you were wondering who is running this show, so we are Intersection Group. We like to think that we help people create better enterprises, and we know that is a ambitious statement. That's why we have put the galaxy behind our logo, um, so the Milky Way. Um, and later, you can download a kit for a Milky Way map, so everything fits together. But uh, one thing at a time. Um, and uh, yeah, our group is named after my first book uh, called Intersection. Here you see a minor website selling the book. Um, and I would like to start actually uh, the uh, session with a question to everyone, which is why, according to you, Amazon is so successful at what they are doing. And uh, in order to vote, you will just have to scan this QR code or go to x minus g dot at slash vote. Um, and I just have to actually start the this thingy. And um, Maybe, but if you could put the URL once again in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, x minus g dot at slash vote. X minus z? Uh, g, like group, oh, intersection g. group. Yeah. Not. At, because we are based in Austria. No, I don't have it. Can, can you x minus g dot at or? <laughs> slash vote, yes. Yeah, okay, slash the vote. I wrote it correctly, yeah. Yeah, so just click the link in the chat and uh, let us know why do you think Amazon is so successful at what they are doing. You can write anything that comes to mind. So yeah, what we have here um, is, uh, well, the customer experience, the ecosystem they build, they are good at doing stuff at scale. More people coming in. Yep. Continuously improved, customer centric, interesting business model, caring about the customer. A vision. Any more opinions? Operational excellence, uh, products, mm -hmm. innovation, easy to use, design. Okay, now we see that some people agree about <laughs> scale and ecosystem. Um, eight votes in. Yeah, so um, what we see here is already like a um, uh, a weakness of this uh, tech cloud system, right? <laughs> that we um, we have the same concept several times, but they are as like they are written slightly differently. So yeah, we have the customer a lot. So we have customer experience, CX, caring about the customer, customer in the center, customer centric. Um, so the customer is important. Then we have doing things at scale. We have the ecosystem. Um, we have continuous improvement. We have a strong vision. Um, we have a range of products. Uh, easy to use. We could even maybe correlate with customer experience or user experience. 
um, the servers. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you for this. So you see, like the whole point of doing this was there is not one answer. <laughs> there are several things that Amazon is doing right. Um, and uh, that was actually kind of the point. So if you look at uh, the cover of Intersection, you see all these little icons. Um, and each icon stands for uh, a facet um, that um, you might want to look into when designing an enterprise. So and what you, what you have there is basically a lot of the things that you just mentioned. So we have operations, architecture, we have uh, experience, we have the brand identity, we have the business model, we have uh, um, the functionality, we have the interaction design, the communication, the services, and so on. Um, and uh, when we talk about enterprise design, what we're actually talking about is designing these things together so that they fit together rather than in separation um, and in silos. Right, thank you for the for the first interaction. So yeah, uh, here are some of the symbols we are using. So these are what we call the enterprise design facets. So we have the architecture, the product, um, the identity, the brand, uh, the experience, and the organization. Um, if you actually have red intersection uh, or you want to buy it, uh, which is of course a good idea. Um, this is the uh, successor model. So instead of the 20 original aspects that are in that book, we are now using these six. Uh, took us about 10 years to simplify it. Um, but uh, yeah, today we we'll, we will talk about um, how to design better enterprises using these um, these uh, different facets. Um, and here they are. So at the very, very base, a very, very fundamental question, um, we are asking, why does the enterprise exist? So that's the identity of the enterprise. What does it actually do for people? What's the value it creates for people in their lives, which is uh, the experience facet? And how does it actually work? How does it do what it does? Uh, how does it do that well? Um, how does it run? That's the architecture. And then at the intersections of these different facets and the related questions, we have um, more uh, detailed questions that uh, yeah, um, are kind of a, a merge between those different perspectives. So if we want to pursue the purpose why we exist and build it into a working architecture, we have to organize ourselves. So we have to design an organization and work together. Um, if we do that well, we will actually make great products and services and these products then appear in people's experiences. So what do we make an offer depends on what we can do and what people want from us. And that will then in turn reflect on our brand, uh, which is how we are being perceived by people, which is the reflection of our identity. Um, but before we dive deeper into this model, um, uh, we want to um, ask another question that is kind of the opposite question what if an enterprise is badly designed? How do you actually recognize enterprises that are not well designed? Um, and so we we call this enterprise awkwardness. It's a little bit of a pun on enterprise architecture. <laughs> um, and what you see here uh, is an obviously bad result some enterprise produced uh, in China. So you have this pile of junk bikes. Um, there might be various reasons why this happened, right? So maybe it's product quality issues. Maybe they are all broken. Maybe they have not been designed for recycling. Maybe it's a logistics problem. Uh, maybe there are too many bikes that have been channeled to one location because they wanted to um, uh, like attack a, a local competitor just by, by mass uh, and it didn't work. Or maybe there was regulation being imposed and they couldn't actually put the bikes anymore. So they are all here. Um, or maybe it was actually um, the whole business model in the first place being wrong. Um, maybe they wanted to sell the data of your movement um, and overdid the production of the uh, tracking device. Um, whatever the reason, we can always look at uh, an enterprise um, applying the old systems thinking principle of POSEWIT, right? The purpose of a system is what it does. So we can look at the outcomes the enterprise produces. What does it actually do? And then we can. Um, get to an opinion. Is this actually a well-designed enterprise? Is this a 
good outcome or not. And if not, we call that enterprise awkwardness. Um, a more personal example from Paris, where I live, uh, of an enterprise that appears in my life every day. It's called Vilip. It's a um, bike sharing system, public-private uh, partnership with the city of Paris. And for a long time, when you opened the app, you saw this um, screen here. Uh, so it shows you all of Paris. It shows you where you are and what direction you're looking with your phone. Um, and it shows you where there are bike spots all, all around Paris and beyond. And this screen, of course, is completely useless. So um, I'm, I will not go to the other side or walk to the other side of Paris because there's a bike uh, station there. So what we then have to do is to, to take the, our fingers and pinch and zoom in to where the little dot is. Uh, and, and let's assume we did that. Um, and then it's what you see here. Now this is actually the start screen of the app, so they improved something. But uh, what I for a long time often got is uh, is this screen saying zero 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 no bikes available. Why is that? Because this location is on a hill, and so everyone is taking bikes down the hill. No one is taking bikes up the hill, um, and so the user experience the customer experience and the user experience of this app, of the service, is bad, right? Because I wanted to use it to go somewhere. That's my task. Um, now, if you are a UX designer, um, what, or uh, yeah, if you're an experienced designer working in the digital department of that company, the scope that you usually get is the app, right? And if you say, well, but you know, there are no bikes, the experience is bad because there are no bikes, they are like, well, you know, that's the logistics department, that's the operations department, that's the, I don't know, whoever in the organization is responsible for that, but it's definitely not, not in scope of your digital app design. Um, and the point here being that if, if we actually take experience design seriously and we want to design better experiences for people, we have to look into the operations and the organizations that are delivering these experiences. And the solution might be maybe outsourcing the, a, the, a, a kind of redistribution pattern. It might be introducing electric bikes. It might be incentivizing users with points if they put the bikes back up the hill. There are many, many potential solutions we might try. Um, but all of these are beyond the scope that a typical experience designer gets. Also beyond the scope, of course, of an enterprise architect, an organization designer, a business designer. Maybe a service designer might tackle this. But uh, if they actually do, then they have to look at the enterprise as something to deliver a better service. Um, if you deal with enterprises uh, in your personal life, uh, the, you, might experience, you might experience enterprise awkwardness also like this. You call them, and this happens. This is a comic from the old meal. And so they tell you, thank you for holding. Your call is very important to us. They um, play Celine Dion to you. They ask you a lot of very, very stupid questions. They forget who you are all the time. They change personality. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's basically the automation of the communication that has uh, stripped away all humanity and sometimes all sanity from these dialogues. Uh, and yeah, it's it's sometimes quite tough to call customer service and actually get to a human being. Um, and so enterprise awkwardness can render like this. Uh, it can also render internally. This is actually a photo I took at a client organization from my consultancy. Um, and this is in their uh, bathroom uh, or restroom. Um, so you have there this light and the light is switched off and you have this sign. Um, that says, for energy saving reasons, this light has been permanently switched off with a reference to the Kyoto Protocol. That sign is laminated and printed in four colors. Um, and this is just, you know, a um, corporate social or, or environmental responsibility team going nuts, right? They have to um, justify their existence and um, their, their work like or, or basically brag about their work to all colleagues and they thought like experienced designers like what's the touch point uh what's the moment where we can catch everyone well everyone has to go into this room at some point so let's put something there about what we are doing 
instead of, for example, just removing the light and not saying anything. Sometimes enterprise awkwardness gets uh, uh, featured in, in media, like here Bloomberg asking with illustrations um, or like uh, um, uh, uh, telling stories of uh, what ha what's happening at United Airlines, right? So unhappy employees, delayed flights, bad, bad customer experience, bad service quality, tech meltdowns, IT often to blame, right? The IT system doesn't work, so our flights can't take off and also questionable behavior. And, and you see the, the tagline at the bottom. So it's not even United's quest to become a great, well-designed enterprise, but be less awful. That's basically uh, the um, ambition that has been uh, well, captured here. Yeah, so why is this happening? Why, why uh, are enterprises being so awkward? Um, we think that sometimes it has to do with the nature of um, well, how they do things and how they design the environments that people work in. Uh, this is a scene from Office Space. Um, so the, the way companies are dealing with employees, dealing with teams, dealing with tasks, uh, dealing with uh, uh, goals, um, collaboration, uh, silos, all sorts of these kind of things can lead to bad decisions, can lead to t turning a blind eye to things uh, that are outside your brief or outside the scope that has been communicated to you. Um, it can be that they are busy doing other things instead of fixing these things. So, for example, uh, hunting trends, right? So you remember not long ago, consultants came in and said, you should focus this year on blockchain. It changes everything. Everyone is talking about it. We cannot left behind. The applications are endless. And the moment the executives asks, what is blockchain? Consultant says, also AI, right? So uh, the attention is caught by uh, trends and other things. Um, it can also be organizational issues. This comes from our friends at the Ready, an organization design consultancy. Um, and in their seminars on organization, they often ask people, are these behaviors something that you recognize in your enterprise? Insisting everything goes through channels, no shortcuts, processes have to be followed, workflows have to be followed, everything has to be decided in committees, um, everything has to be relegated for further study and consideration, um, as many people as possible in the committees, a lot of haggling over words, should this be called a function or a capability or a process or a, an application or what is it really referring back to last meeting? Can we go back to that, please? And of course, multiplying the procedures and clearances um, as much as possible. Um, and many people say, well, yeah, actually, at our organization, at my place, we are we are doing this. Um, I recognize this list. And... Um, then it's quite fun to reveal where this list is coming from. It comes from a declassified field manual for sabotaging enemy businesses uh, during the Second World War uh, by the CIA. So insist, like all of the things that we just uh, uh, went through are what you were instructed to do if you uh, wanted to sabotage um, German businesses um, uh, when you were working for the Americans. Um, and it's interesting that so many years later and without uh, the, at least the same kind of cold war going on, um, we still find the same, the same behaviors in organizations, um, making it hard for us to fix things and to make the whole thing better. Um, what else can be the reason? Some reason can also be hidden in this. Uh, this is a actually a medium-sized company and a more or less accurate a depiction of the IT landscape that has been grown over many, many years. Um, and a lot of systems have been integrated uh, in a certain fashion. We don't really remember how and who, and um, maybe we don't have all the systems here, and maybe we don't have all the integrations. Um, and this is what we call a scare model. Uh, enterprise architects have sometimes models like this uh, in their uh, up their sleeve. 
And whenever someone comes around with a very ambitious change initiative, they get it out and they say, are you sure you want to change all this? Who will be accountable for this? What do we do here? Uh, we don't even know what's going on here. First, we need to invest, uh, I don't know how many millions to actually um, consolidate this landscape here. And, uh, and only then we can really change something. And uh, anyway, this is not in the budget. And a lot of this has to do uh, with the separation of, um, you could say, the operational change that is, uh, for example, done in, in IT, enterprise architecture, business architecture, and operational teams uh, optimizing what exists, uh, optimizing processes, re-engineering, and what is done on the other side of the spectrum in innovation departments, in design product departments, um, and teams like design thinking. And a long time ago, Gartner in this Smarter with Gartner blog uh, said that um, uh, these things have to go together. So they say here that design, thing, design thinking is about putting the customer at the center, like we said that Amazon actually does, designing a solution for that customer, and then linking that solution to traditional architect pieces like we know from enterprise and business architecture and operating models and so on. Now, the bad news is that this does not work. Uh, we have seen abundant evidence over the last 10 years uh, in our enterprise design practice that the moment you have a designed a great solution for the customer without actually already looking at, at the constraints and the opportunities you can spot in your existing architecture and operations will not be compatible, uh, will not be feasible, um, and will not be viable. And so what we promote is instead make the enterprise itself, the operations, the organization part of the design process, um, design all of these things together, look at the, the customer tasks, the product design, the capabilities delivering these things, the organization um, responsible for delivering this and the purposes these organizations pursue, all of that together using the model that uh, I've shown in the beginning. Uh, rather than treating this as either a waterfall or a separate um, islands. Um, and it also has to do with the question, what is actually good? What is good design when it comes to enterprises? And this is a list, a uh, very classic one also from Dieter Rams, industrial designer. And he, a very long time ago, postulated these 10 principles for good design. And they are clearly product design principles, but we can kind of say that they are still valid even when we talk about enterprises. So it, they say good design, he says good design is innovative, it's useful, it's aesthetic, it makes it understandable, it's unobtrusive, it's honest, long lasting, thorough, good for the env environment, and also not too much design uh, because then it becomes decoration. And uh, 2017 uh, people have updated this for the tech industry uh, saying well we are looking for disruptive addicting solutions we are uh, designing for a b testing we want to collect data send notifications to people make them agree to terms and conditions um, only work on temporary things making prototypes making chatbots because that's uh, currently trending and pleasing the shareholder um, and well, of course, this is sad, but uh, it's kind of reflecting the frustration that many designers have uh, when they get briefed and work on very short-term solutions for uh, ill-defined um, scopes that where all the important business decisions basically already have been made. And it also gets to, if we talk about well-designed enterprises, are we actually just talking about enterprises that are not criminal, that are compliant, uh, that do not, do not break the law? Or do we actually hold enterprises as a group of people, as a community, as a um, social entity to a higher standard? And this is what uh, Daniel Eck from Spotify asked in his interview with Fast Company. Um, so, given all that so if we want to design better enterprises if we want to fight enterprise awkwardness and the the root causes of enterprise awkwardness how do we actually do that um so this is really what our work is about and there are many many 
different ways, of course. Uh, Gartner, again, uh, at some point proposed to integrate design thinking, lean startup and agile. You have the innovation matrix by the board of innovation. You have organization design models like the star models. You have more engineering heavy models like the TOGAF uh, um, ADM. You have SAFE, you have the business Agrisha Guild and so on. Everyone, of course, these are very different models. They are coming from organization design, from, from uh, product design, from enterprise architecture, from business architecture, from uh, design thinking. But they all more or less propose to tackle these issues, even though they are different and they come from different uh, angles and different positions. Um, and so what we think is we have to look again at what we are actually doing here. What is, uh, if we want to see better enterprises emerge, what do we have to do? Well, we have to design them better. So that's why we define enterprise design, um, uh, sneakily stealing from uh, Lou Down's definition of service design. Um, so enterprise design is the design of enterprises, the whole thing. It doesn't mean that you have to change everything all the time at once. It just means that you find the best angle of attack using all of these different uh, facets that we just touched upon and you find a good intervention that will then have a ripple effect and that will make the whole thing shift um, and it comes back to the definitions of what we are actually talking about so when we talk about design we really like Jared Spool's definition here um, design is the rendering of intent so we want to do something ambitious and design is the result that we can see the rendering the manifestation of that intent in the world. And we design everything we need to design, I don't know, offices, logos, uh, processes, organizations, brands, to make that happen. Then what is an enterprise is actually quite a similar um, way to, to frame it. So Len Feskens uh, said, an enterprise is an ambitious endeavor. So it's not the organization, it's not the company, it's not the legal entity, it's why those things exist what they are for. So, yeah, so we have an ambitious endeavor and we need to design it to render the, its, its ambitious intent. And this comes back to design thinking again. So when we talk about design thinking, uh, it is basically the, um, the application of design principles and work methods to things that are traditionally not uh, in the scope of design work. So instead of talking about products, uh, like physical products or environments or houses or even um, intangibles like services. We talk about business problems, we talk about policies, we talk about all sorts of things, and we, but we think about it like a designer. And in many organizations we see that happens like this. So you have a room full of post-its, you have some design thinker, um, you know, uh, running everyone through what has been found out with uh, observations. Uh, you have a lot of brainstorming techniques going on. And you also have this skeptical guy here on the left, usually in corporate environments, because you can imagine what goes on in his head. It's uh, who will pay for this? Is this planning, uh, does it actually fit our plan? Does it fit the roadmap? Uh, who will be accountable? Ah, we have to, we did not invite X. Uh, they are really important for this. Um, is this aligned with our goals? Uh, can we actually pull that off legally? And so on and so on. And if we compare the practice of design thinking with the practice of design uh, in the way it is practiced, for example, here in, a, in an American uh, architecture school, architecture in the sense of making buildings, um, you have here a design student or architecture student working on some proposal, making multiple models. Right? You see here on the wall, you see uh, blueprints, you see renderings uh, in, in context, you see studies of the heat or, or the, the climate uh, control of the building, uh, you see um, uh, the environment, uh, how it fits into an environment, you also have physical prototypes. Um, so there's not one model, not one representation that we need to make in order to capture something as complex as a building or an enterprise. We have to look at it from many different angles and we have to see if we change something here, what does it do there? Uh, and that's what we do with uh, our, our enterprise design facets and elements. Um, and the other important thing here is this group of people looking at her presenting this and thinking, okay, 
did she consider this? Did she consider that? Have you looked at this inspiration? Why did you take this decision? Are those two decisions actually compatible? Have you made sure this is feasible? Does this work with the static? Did the client actually accept this? Or uh, will this be useful for users and so on? So the sense of critique, of expert critique, uh, has been kind of replaced in design thinking by um, user testing or acceptance, uh, as it has been called. Uh, before in in IT circles, and this doesn't work, right? So we need uh, we need critique back, um, and so this is why making many models, looking at them from many perspectives, and looking at them thoroughly uh, is part of of very um, of good enterprise design work. So getting back to the facets, um, here are slightly longer questions um, as they pertain to the different facets. So why do we exist? Who are we? What matters to us? Our identity? Um, what is our role in people's lives uh, that we strive for uh, and that we play today? What do we actually do for them? And how are we doing what we're doing? How are we operating? And uh, what are we capable with our architecture, with our operations of achieving? Um, and then at the intersections, these decisions, how do we work together as a team? How do we uh, design our brands? How do we want to be perceived? And what are we making and offering for people? Uh, so all of this is one model. You can look at any chunk of the enterprise using any of these colors. You will always find something. Um, you will always find some products that are being used by someone, some brands that are being perceived by someone, internal, external. Uh, you will always some, find some organization and you will always find that these questions are useful. Why are we doing this again? How are we actually doing this? And what is it that we're actually doing in the end for people, for our customers, but also maybe for our shareholders or employees or other people? Um, and we have in Edgy, um, which is our language for doing enterprise design, uh, broken down this model into elements and relations. So we have uh, three types of elements. We have outcomes, activities, and structures, and uh, they translate to more specific elements or more specific variants of the same element in each facet. So in the identity facet, we talk about why we exist is our purpose, what, what's the story that we tell about why we exist and why we are here. And that ultimately then is, is uh, rendered into content that we are communicating. Um, in the architecture facet, we are talking about our capabilities. What can we actually do using our assets and running through processes, business processes. And in the uh, experience channel, uh, sorry, in the experience facet, we are talking about what do people actually want from us? What's the task that we help people achieve? What are the journeys that they go through? And what channels do they use to interact with us, like uh, physical channels, uh, digital channels, apps, websites, email, fax, uh, you name it. And then at the intersections, we have the more concrete manifestations of the enterprise, um, our brand, our products, uh, and our organizational teams. Um, so there is a, a webinar coming up on, on Edgy, uh, if you are interested um, in learning more about this. For now, you will just get uh, after this the slides and the definitions. We will not go through this right now. Um, but a second question to you, if you just go back to the same URL as before, um, or you scan the QR code, um, in your work as a practitioner, whatever you call yourself, um, what are the maps and models that we, you are making and using? And I just have to forward this. Oh, here you go. Yeah. So just go back, scan the QR code, or go back to the URL for voting. And uh, I know not all models and maps that exist uh, and that are trending are in there. Um, that's OK. If there's something missing, you can write it in the chat. Uh, Mentimeter only has so many options, so we had to make a choice. Um, but if you recognize any of these maps and you use them in your work, please let us know and we can see a little bit um, how people are going about their work here. So we have someone working with capability maps, domain and data models, and process maps. Anything else? 
application architecture diagrams and already a winner, which is the capability map. A service blueprint, business model canvas, customer journey map, capability map still leading. We could use a few more votes. Yeah. Although I, I typed in the wrong URL first, so that's my problem. That's my <laughs> mistake. <laughs> hey, there's one that's not on the on the map. Strategy on a page. Right. Mm -hmm. Good one. A few years back, the business model canvas was more prevalent. <laughs> okay. All right, I think we can start interpreting the, the results. So a clear winner capability map followed by process maps and domain or data models. Um, we also have application architecture in here. And uh, that for me is an indicator that, uh, well, we have a few business or enterprise architects in the room. We also have a few uh, at least hobby experienced designers, maybe even professionals working with customer journey maps, working with service blueprints. Um, and all of that to say, uh, yeah, there is not one killer model that we can use to um, make sense of the enterprise and transform it, um, at least none that we have seen so far. There are some attempts. We actually use the Milky Way map for that. But uh, what we also are doing is we are making, for example, capability maps and journey maps separately and then use a service blueprint to combine them to see which capability are serving which steps, which tasks in the customer journeys so that there's a traceability. And then at each of these, we can say, well, uh, maybe there's a product opportunity there and then inform the product model um, based on that, the product portfolio or the product component model. So all, seeing all of these maps and, and models and views as something that uh, is part of one whole rather than in isolation is what we are getting at here. And so what we would like to leave you with today is um, a starter kit. So if you go to x-g.at slash kit4, uh, you can download it. Uh, it's a yeah entry-level tool um, to, that corresponds to each of the components of the framework that we are using to deal with complexity. And what you see here on the right is a uh, depiction of any complex system. Um, it's a Lorentz system, so it could depict the weather, but it could also depict what's going on in an enterprise, right? So each of the coordinates here uh, could, or each of the positions on this model could represent something like it's uh, the sun is shining or it's a stormy day or it's uh, raining. And the point of the model being um, tiny changes of variables can, uh, uh, can push the entire system into a different direction, which makes it hard to plan with the weather or with enterprises. But it also means that if we show the right model to the right person at the right time in the right workshop with the right view, and we trigger the right decision, the right conversations, then we can actually have a huge influence as enterprise designers on the enterprises that we would like to see become better and become more useful. Um, so how does the, the toolkit actually help you with that? So we mapped out what enterprises need to go through as they go about their transformation and innovation. So yeah, basically they have to innovate. So 
adopt something new, right, to survive, a very basic definition of innovation. And they have to transform what already exists. And in order to do so, they have to find opportunities uh, for innovation and transformation. And then they have to implement solutions and changes. Um, and the components that you will see in the kit uh, are basically helping you or designed to help you navigate this complexity. So you have the facet model that we already mentioned in there, uh, in the center as a shared language and a shared um, uh, way to frame enterprise challenges and, and uh, potential solutions. And then you have components uh, like the scan to identify opportunities for innovation. You have maps you can make to map out what you want to transform and uh, make clear what the opportunities or where the opportunities actually lie that you identified in the scan. We have a sprint format, a design sprint, enterprise design sprint. Uh, it's a workshop format to actually come up with innovative solutions and an enterprise design system to get uh, other people on board and make this practice a, or yeah, make, make enterprise design uh, and, and changes um, adopted across the organization and get other people to design their bits rather than designing everything for them. Um, and so just going qu quickly through this, so you have the facets with the descriptions of each of them. Um, you have the, the maps, uh, including, for example, the Milky Way map. There will be a webinar on this uh, that you, we would like to uh, invite you to tune into, but also some other maps. Uh, you have a scan uh, with uh, some research techniques and some canvases that you can use for a basic enterprise design scan. Uh, you have sprint formats. Um, uh, so going through the design sprint and uh, what you would do for each facet in, in each phase of a design sprint, which is basically a rapid design thinking approach applied to enterprises. And you have system principles, patterns, and platforms. Um, so enterprise design system components that you might want to work on when uh, disseminating this practice in the organization. So um, getting to the end, uh, all of this is part of our ongoing work on EDGY, which is the new name of for the Intersection Toolkit. I have to update this slide, which is an open source set of tools um, that we work on for, uh, for doing enterprise design uh, for the key challenges that we discussed before. We do that as a nonprofit organization running a community, running events like, for example, our intersection conference every year and this webinar series. And we also work on learning and knowledge products like trainings. Um, there's one actually starting this week. Um, all of this is in the early stages, but uh, so we are still in startup mode, but uh, um, growing every year and uh, getting out more and more things every year, like, for example, our first book in the middle, which is uh, my second and Bart, it's your how many books? <laughs> mm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, one of count. many. One of many. Yeah. <laughs> I can still count. So, uh, so yeah, so the pattern language book that we published two years ago. Um, so tune in uh, for the upcoming webinars. So there's one with Bart, is it next week, actually, on the patterns, on impact patterns? Um, I believe so, next week, yep. yep. Yes, same and time, the week after we look into behavioral patterns, and then you have uh, a webinar for enterprise architects, for service designers, and on the Milky Way enterprise map. Um, we are also... Uh, running our conference again that I already mentioned. Intersection 23 will take place on September 18 and 19 in Vienna. Uh, so if you want to meet us in person and uh, or even maybe contribute a talk, the call for contributions will uh, start, I think, in February. Um, and so, yeah, here you have our book. Uh, if you are interested in enterprise design practice, uh, there are 35, 35 patterns that we collected with over 50 practitioners on how to do enterprise design in practice, how to increase your impact on the enterprise um, with these different chapters of uh, uh, boosting your impact, um, adjusting your behavior to enterprises, practicing enterprise design and creating uh, impactful creations, uh, well, maps and models and tools and so on. Uh, so here you see some of the, the patterns, just as a sneak preview. Um, and yeah, 
last question to you and then also we open the floor to all sorts of questions you might have um, for the last 12 minutes um, will you try out an enterprise design approach so i have to just uh, here we go so if you go to the same url or you scan the qr code again uh, let us know whether or not you would like or you, you you think you might try out an enterprise design approach you have also all the urls here uh, of our group website and then all the books uh, the starter kit the conference uh, the past webinars and also our slack where we um, meet as a community and have conversations about all of this so please join us there and uh, yeah but do we have any questions so far well the last the most recent question is, uh, do we do training boot camps in Dubai? I've said that that's certainly something we can discuss. Uh, any yes. plans to go to Dubai, uh, Milan? Uh, actually, yes, there is a tentative plan for September. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't have confirmation yet. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. We will announce it as soon as we do have confirmation. Yeah. And dates and all of that. Uh, online EA training details. What exactly? That's not a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a question mark behind it, but what is the question, Sumit? I think uh, to, to stay uh, up to date with developments, uh, please follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, we always post our movements and intended movements on LinkedIn um, or drop us an email. Yeah. So the question is the schedule of online EA training. Um, okay. So we don't do EA training. We do enterprise design trainings. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there's one starting right now and we will announce more dates uh, for later this year soon. Um, it's an online cohort-based training that runs over six weeks. So uh, yeah, just watch our website or maybe subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and then you will receive uh, updates on that as soon as we have dates. Um, the next one, so the current one that is starting tomorrow is optimized for the European and American time zones. So we'll, we'll be run in the European afternoon, but then we will have for one for Australia and uh, well, maybe Northern Europe, uh, early bird people um, in uh, uh, probably late summer. Thank you, Ahmad. Any more questions? How's your chance? Someone's typing. It's promising. <laughs> That's always promising. Yeah. Ah, thank you. I will just stop the sharing mm -hmm. so that I can see you again. <laughs> Good. I think if there's nothing else, we can wrap it up here. There's still someone typing, but I'm not sure that we're getting any more questions. I think people are mostly saying thank you. And I want to thank you, Milan, for doing a wonderful job. And I hope to see everybody back in all the other sessions we're doing because there's so much more to, to unpack and, and, and talk about. So I want to thank everybody for joining in. And uh, Me too. Let us know what you thought. And uh, if you have ideas, suggestions, questions, never be afraid to reach out. We're on LinkedIn. We're on email. We're on Slack. 
uh, our idea is really to be a community uh, more than just talking at you. We would like, like to really talk with you. <laughs> oh, chat GPT. I knew it would come up at some point. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's worth a try. See what happens. Anyone volunteering on that? I, I have I, I have some biases in, in that direction. I used to play with AI years ago. And yes, certainly a good idea. I think it's worth worth experimenting with. The, the, the one thing to, to, to experiment with is can you actually be creative uh, and discover new original thoughts while you're using something that is actually designed to just discover what is already there? I, I'm, I'm, must be possible, but... I think that's the real challenge. Otherwise, you get stuck in rehashing what exists. And where does the discovery and, and innovation and invention come from in, in such a scenario? So that would, that would be my challenge to the community. Uh, use AI and machine learning uh, in a way that actually furthers invention. Yeah, creativity. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's 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 a big challenge. Creativity, originality, uh, discovering the the unexplored spaces. Maybe maybe there is something there. It's certainly worth trying. All right, good. Then um, let's call it a webinar. <laughs> okay, a webinar. <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks everyone thanks, shall we Bart. just uh, shall we just close the proceedings yes let's do that okay see you next time bye bye <laughs>